Good morning. Hasn't God blessed us tremendously? It's been a few days since Thanksgiving, uh, so I've been reminiscing on some of the things that I have to be thankful for. And uh, I, I have a, a home to come to. I have food on the table. I have a family that loves me. Uh, and even more than that, I have a, a Lord and Savior that loves me enough to die for me. Uh, I am someone that is so very blessed. He, God, deserves my very best. But sometimes I give Him my worst. And that's exactly what the children of Israel did when they came out of captivity. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 8, it says, When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. Once the Israelites had come out of captivity, they didn't respond like God had responded to them. They uh, did not give. They did not show God gratitude. They gave him uh, polluted sacrifices, uh, blind animals. When God had required their very best, and in other words, in, in Malachi chapter one verse eight, you give God, you give to God what you wouldn't even give to a human being. And I look in my life, at in, in myself, um, and sometimes I, I can see that I let selfishness win out over my devotion for God sometimes. And, and if you dig deep enough, you'll find that you yourself are inherently selfish. All, all people are. All of us, every single person in this world, needs to change. We need to bow our knee to Christ and humbly say, I need you, Lord, more than anything. However, there's hope. God has given us something in which we are in, in which which enables us to give him the very best that we have. In Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 24 backing up a little bit in, in time from what we just read this is when uh, they are still in captivity and, and this is what uh, God says through Ezekiel in verse 24 it says, for I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put you and, and put and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. Back in this day and time, uh, the Israelites did not worship and serve God the way that he commanded. God gave him their very best, but they gave God their very worst by worshiping idols, slapping him in the face, by letting social injustice reign, not, not taking care of, of the poor, of the sick, of the helpless. Their leaders were corrupt. And, and God comes to them and says, you aren't even able to serve me because of your heart of stone. But God promises in Ezekiel 36 that he will one day give them a new heart, a, heart, a soft heart of flesh that is willing and able to serve him. And, and if you are a Christian today, if you have given your life to Christ, then you have that soft heart of flesh that is willing and able to serve Him. So that, that's a gift that God has given to us. And God wants us to use um, our gifts, our talents, our abilities to give Him what He deserves, our very best. God requires your heart. He wants all of you. He wants the very best you have to offer because that is exactly what he did for you at Calvary. A person that I respect greatly, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who gave his life in service to Jesus Christ, died in a Nazi prison camp refusing to give up his faith in Jesus. He said in one of his books, When God calls a man, 
He bids him come and die. That's what God wants from us, our very heart. He wants all of us. He wants our very best because that's what he's given to us. Are you willing to give?